plastics have certainly changed society with their chemical resiliency and ease of production. Many processes and technologies are now possible and accessible due to plastics manufacturing that has enriched modern society. But these unique polymers do not come without risk as their strength renders them pervasive and persistent when improperly disposed of in the environment. Microplastics and nanoplastics are very small particles produced when larger plastic pieces physically degrade. These particles are too small to be seen with the naked eye. However, using special methodologies, they have recently been able to be detected and have been found all over the globe, in water, in sediment, in laundry, and even in animals. Fish caught in the wild have shown accumulation of microplastics in their intestines, livers, and gills. The details of potential health effects caused by plastic ingestion on various animals is not known. This emerging concern of the final fate of plastics in the environment prompted two Mansfield University researchers to undertake a unique and interdisciplinary collaboration to study the health effects of plastic uptake in animal models as well as in plants. I'm Elaine Farkas. I'm a physicist here at Mansfield University. After seeing recent reports of plastics being found in fish organs and in sea salt, I wondered what the effects might be in humans. How much are we exposed to and from where? Dr. Long is a cancer researcher, and she helped me design the study using an animal model to investigate this problem. We have been conducting research into the fate of plastics in animals and have involved several undergraduates. Animals were fed small plastic beads and the students searched tissue samples to find the beads and studied body fluids to see if there were any adverse effects. Tyler Walters, a senior undergraduate majoring in biology, prepares histological slices in the histology lab at Mansfield. This instrument is like a special deli slicer. It makes thin cuts of tissue so that pathological analysis can be performed by imaging. We also stain the tissues to look for markers of inflammation and structural changes within the tissue. For example, we hypothesized that bees would deposit in the liver because the liver is important in digestion. As a result, the liver would become inflamed and we can study immune cell infiltration directly by the use of staining. Here's a section I stained for cellular infiltration. We expect to see increases in cellular infiltration as a result of bead accumulation within the liver. We can learn a lot about liver function and damage by looking at tissue at the structural and cellular level. Katherine Thompson, a junior in the chemistry department, images histological sections of livers, spleens, and kidneys from mice fed plastics orally. What she has found is astounding. We have found the most beads thus far in the spleens, which is what Dr. Long and Dr. Farkas had expected. And we know what our beads are because they are these bright areas that show up on our images in the fluorescent microscope. These beads only have showed up in the samples that we expected them to. We have not seen any of these anomalies in the control group, so we are fairly certain that these dots are in fact our beads. In addition to bead accumulation and physical tissue changes, we're also interested in whether beads are actually causing organ damage. To answer this question, we assessed liver enzyme levels in the blood. We looked for the same enzymes that are increased in people suffering from liver disease. Specifically, we looked at ALT and AST. And looking right here, we have a fold increase in our liver enzymes from baseline, so prior to treatment and after treatment. And you can see that we do have increases in those mice that received our smaller beads as well as our larger beads compared to our control mice that didn't receive any beads. Mansfield University is pursuing unique interdisciplinary research in the Endless Mountains. This is just a sample of the sort of leading edge science being pursued at Mansfield. Undergraduates are able and encouraged to participate in groundbreaking research in Grant Science Center. Our small student-faculty ratio and faculty dedicated to undergraduate learning in and out of the classroom makes for a unique and rewarding undergraduate experience. Join us as we explore the natural world at Mansfield University.